Hey guys, Pete with Leisure Time here. What we're doing today is we are removing the salt system on a 2022 jet setter and going back to the ozone setup. So our serial number here is located just behind the panel. You can also find it down here on the tow kick. In the bottom. So I've already removed the front cover panel. I did have to remove the lifter arm for the cover lifter in order to remove the panel. First thing we're gonna do is I've shut the power off the breaker and we're just going to remove the plug for the salt system controller. And I'm going to disconnect the wires headed up to the cartridge. We're just gonna tuck those in here out of the way so in the future customer ever did want to go back to try out the salt system again then all that stuff is sitting here waiting for them. Next thing we'll do is just plug in the ozone generator. We've got two wires coming off of the ozone generator, black and white. And that's located down here and it shows ozone. And just make sure you're not getting that one confused with the APM plugs. Next, we will get the ozone mounted. And I think what I'll probably do is mount the ozone over here on this plate. And right behind that plate, we're going to be putting in the Mozzie injector back here on this hose. They got stickers on the hose that shows you which way water's flowing. And they always have a sticker telling you where to install the Mozzie injector. That's this one, and it was right here, and I've already pulled that off. What I'm going to do is just remove this plate to give me easier access. We're gonna do this quick and easy. With it being cold outside right now, I don't wanna drain the tub. So I'm just gonna take some needle nose vice grips, clamp off one side, come over here and clamp off another side. And then we're just going to go ahead and cut that line right there. Might get a little bit of water dripping out, that's all right. Open up our bag with the Mozzie injector. Just gonna take our hose clamps, slide it over one end here. Slide it over the other end over here. Now take a close look at your Mozzie injector. And it'll show you there's a little arrow which way the water's flowing. You just want to make sure you put this Mozzie injector with the direction of water flow. That way the Venturi can work properly. So water's flowing in this direction. Okay, now that we got the Mozzie injector in, what we're gonna wanna do is take our hose here, kinda get it situated. We also wanna run it up as high as we can to what we call the bar top. That's the top of the tub right here. This check valve here is supposed to keep water from backing up, but if for any reason that check valve fails and water gets up past this hose, we want it to stop at the water line at the top of the tub. And then we'll run our hose back down to our ozone generator, and that way water doesn't get backed up into the ozone generator and damage that. I'm also going to run the hose around in circles here. That makes it difficult for water to get through the loop-de-loop -loop there too. It comes with a couple of zip ties. We will try to utilize those. And sometimes there's not any really good spots that you can tie to. In this case, we're gonna create a nice spot for the zip tie to go. Now the frame of this is plastic, and so there's a little bit of a space here, a gap in the plastic right up here. And so what I'm gonna do is just punch a small hole through that plastic. Be careful not to go all the way through the shell. And that way I can run the hose right up through there, and then I'll run a zip tie around that to keep it up in place. Now you don't have to really cinch down on that zip tie because you can allow a little bit of room. You can maneuver that hose. And then like I said, I'm gonna mount that ozone to the back of this plastic plate right here, which will make it really easy and convenient to get access to. You notice I've waited to get the hose mounted before I've removed my vice grips just to keep the water from backing up through that hose. Also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the ozone generator this way as opposed to this way. And I'm gonna do that because, like I said, if somehow water gets past this check valve and makes it up over the water line and through the loop-de-loop -loop and makes it back to the ozone generator, if I were to mount it this way, the water would get back through there and it'd drip down inside the box 
box and then fill up the box, shorting something out before it makes it through here and drips out. And then, you know, we're gonna cause problems with the rest of the hot tub system, tripping breakers and whatnot. It's better if we mount the box this way. The water does make it in here. It's likely to just drip back out again before it damages anything or, or trips any breakers. They do provide you with two screws to mount that box. Okay, now what I want to do is plug our hose into the ozone generator. I carry around this little mini torch, which lights up my propane heater to keep me warm in the winter time, but I'll also use it to help with this vinyl tubing. It can get pretty stiff while it's cold outside. You can use that mini torch, just to kind of warm that up and it makes it more pliable and easier to plug onto that ozone. Another trick that I've heard from some other guys is they'll take a pair of needle nose pliers, like these ones. Now that we've got our tube warmed up and pliable, we stick that in there and that helps to kind of stretch out that tube a little bit. It's gonna slide right on top of that valve a lot easier. If you're still having problems trying to get that on there, another trick, something called super lube. This is for lubricating O-rings and stuff when you're putting seals together, inverter valves or jet pumps or anything like that that uses a seal. Something else you can use, Vaseline, chapstick, whatever is going to help lubricate that to allow that to slip on a little bit easier for you. Bam, like a glove. So now that we got everything mounted up that way, everything's plugged in good to go. We can now remove our vice clamps. Sometimes I'll take my pliers and go back and just try to work that hose a little bit so it relaxes and goes back into its natural place. That side and this side has already done it. There was something else that I had already done that I'm gonna show you it anyway. Um, of course, we will no longer be needing salt cartridge anymore and we'll wanna put the plug back in. A lot of times I will get this problem where the customer calls and they've said they've replaced their salt cartridge and their system isn't working anymore. And what has happened is they have accidentally removed their salt cartridge and put their plug in and not even realize that it's not the same thing. The cartridges do have these, these plates on them, which is what creates the chlorine in the salt water. Whereas the plug just plugs off the top of that housing, allowing water to flow freely through and not create the chlorine in the salt. Put the plug back in. And we're gonna start up our system. We always wanna turn on our pumps and system first. Before we turn on the heater, we wanna come over and confirm that we do have water flow. See the burp of bubbles coming up and we have the plume or almost like a volcano effect of what would be a smoke in a volcano is now ozone bubbles coming up out of the heater return. This is gonna be the major difference between using salt system and the ozone. With the salt system, you wouldn't be seeing all those bubbles coming up through the heater return. But with the ozone, you do because of that mozzie injector. Now that we got water flowing freely, we can go ahead and turn on the heater. Now there isn't any programming that you need to change. Once you removed the controller from the circuit board, the circuit board automatically acknowledges that that thing is no longer in use and the plugs for the ozone are plugged in and sends power directly to that and starts working. So there isn't any programming on the board that we need to do. There isn't soft jumpers that we need to change up here. When your salt system isn't working properly, you'll have this little water droplet here that will blinking, telling you, hey, there's something wrong, you need to fix it. But we no longer have that problem because the salt system's on. Right now, if we try to touch that, it doesn't go to your salt system because it's not plugged in, it's not doing anything. So everything should be good here. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and message on the channel and we'll try to get a answer for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a comment, hit that like button, and subscribe to get future content from Leisure Time Inc.